Hey, sixth grade. I hope all is well. Today in math, we're going to be talking about two-step equations. This is going to cover page 265 and 266 in your textbook. To solve these two-step equations, we're doing the same kind of thing that we do with the other equations. We have to try to get our variable by itself. There's just more math involved in it. So the first thing we do is we try to get all the numbers to one side. Um, so since this is 3x plus 2 equals 11, we have plus 2, subtract each side by 2. So minus 2, minus 2. So then we have 3x equals 11 minus 2, which is 9. So then we have 3x equals 9. And then we divide both sides by the 3. Divided by 3, divided by 3. So x equals 9 divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So x equals 3. On b, we have x over 4 minus 3 equals 1. Since we have minus 3, we add 3 to each side. So x over 4 equals 1 plus 3, which is 4. To get rid of this 4 in the denominator, we multiply both sides by 4. Times 4, times 4. x equals 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So x equals 16. On C, 5x minus 9 equals 21. Add 9 to both sides, plus 9, plus 9. 5x equals 30. Divide both sides by 5. x equals 30 divided by 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6, so x equals 6. On D, we have x over 2 plus 3 equals 6. So we need to subtract 3 from both sides, minus 3, minus 3, oops, sorry, x over 2 equals 6 minus 3, which is 3. So then we multiply both sides by 2, so times 2, times 2, those cancel out. x over 2 equals 3 times 2, or sorry, just x, <laughs> we already got rid of the 2 x over 2, we did that, so that 2 is gone. Now we have x equals 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so x equals 6. On e, we have 7x equals 5 plus 2. 5 plus 2 equals 7, so 7x equals 7. Divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so x equals 1. On f, x plus 8 equals 3 squared. 3 squared, 3 times 3, equals 9. So x plus 8 equals 9. Subtract 8 from each side, minus 8, minus 8. x equals 9 minus 8, which is 1, so x equals 1. g, x over 3 plus 2 squared equals 5. Well, 2 squared is 4, so we get rid of this 4 by subtracting it, minus 4, minus 4, so x over 3 equals 5 minus 4, which is 1. To um, get rid of this 3 here, we multiply both sides by 3, so x equals 1 times 3, 1 times 3 is 3, so x equals 3. On h, we have 2x minus 7 equals 3 squared. We already know that 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. So 2x minus 7 equals 9. I had 7 on both sides. 2x equals 9 plus 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. Then we divide both sides by 2. So x equals 16 divided by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. x equals 8. On B, we're doing more work with our compound measurements. Uh, to A, we have 3 pounds 4 ounces times 6. So 6 times 4 is 24 ounces. 6 times 3 is 18 pounds. There are 16 ounces in 1 pound, so we know that this is more than 1 pound. So 24 
minus 16. 1. 14 minus 6 is 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. So add 1 pound over here. And we have 8 ounces left over. If we add that up. It is going to be 19 pounds and 8 ounces. It could also be 19 and 1 half pounds uh, because 8 ounces is half of a pound, but we're going to keep our two units. On B, we are adding up weeks and days. 3 weeks, 6 days, 5 weeks, 2 days, 6 weeks, 5 days. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 days. 11, 12, 13, 14 weeks. We know that there are seven days in one week. So we would have six days left over and one more week. And that's going to, if we add those up, that's going to be 15 weeks and six days. On 2C, we have 6 gallons and 3 quarts times 7. 7 times 3 is 21 quarts. 7 times 6 is 42 gallons. We know that there are 4 quarts and 1 gallon. So it's going to be 21 divided by 4. 4 goes into 21 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. There will be one left over, so one quart and five additional gallons. If we add that up, that is going to be 47 gallons and one quart. Okay. D, we have nine feet three inches minus two feet seven inches. So I'm going to have to borrow from the feet. Make that eight feet. There are 12 inches in one foot, so I have to add 12 to this 3, which would make it 15 inches. 15 minus 7 is 8 inches. 8 minus 2 is 6 feet. Okay, on the next part, um, it is wanting us to do um, cross multiplication and then to divide from there. So, for 1a, we have 3 over 7 equals x over 11. We're trying to figure out what this x is. So we would make it, if we cross multiply, 7 times x, 7x equals 3 times 11, 33. Then we would divide both sides by 7. Divide by 7, divided by 7. So this fraction, 33 over 7, is improper, we need to simplify it. So, we need to figure out how many times 7 goes into 33. Well, we know 7 times 1 is 7, times 2 is 14, times 3 is 21, times 4 is 28, um, times 5 would be 35. So 35 would be too much, so we're going to do times 4. 7 times 4 is 28, so 33 minus 28. 13 minus 6, or sorry, 13 minus 8, sorry, is 5. So we're going to have 4, 7 goes into 33 4 times, with 5 sevenths left over. X equals 4 sevenths, 4 and 5 sevenths, sorry. I know it's a little confusing, so we're going to do some more. B, x over 7 equals 5 over 13. Cross multiply again. 13x equals 7 times 5, which is 35. So then we divide both sides by 13. x equals 35 over 13. So 13 times 2 would be 26, and times 3 would be 39. So we know it's going to be 2 and something. So x equals 2 and some sort of fraction. Since 13 times 2 is 26, we're going to do 35 minus 26. 
which is 9. So this is going to be 9 over 13. So x equals 2 and 9 thirteenths. We cannot simplify that, so that is the final answer. C, 2 ninths equals 7 over x. Well, we have 2x equals 7 times 9, which is 63. If we have our 2x, we want to get rid of that 2, divide by 2. So x equals 63 over 2. We know that um, 63 is divisible, or sorry, is not divisible wholly by 2, so we're going to have a fractional amount left over. 2 goes into 6 three times. 0, bring down my 3. 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2, with 1 left over. So it's going to be 31 and 1. Our denominator is 2, it's going to stay 2. So x equals 31 and 1 half. <clears throat> D, 5 over x equals 7 over 20. Well, cross multiply, 7x equals 5 times 20 is 100. Divide both sides by 7. x equals 100 over 7. So then we divide 7 into 100. 7 goes into 10 one time. 7 minus 3, bring down my 0. 7 goes into 30 four times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract, 2 left over. So it's going to be 14 will be our whole number. There are 2 left over, and our denominator was 7. So x equals 14 and 2 sevenths. Find number 2. We're doing the same thing, it's just a little more complicated. We have three and a half over five equals six over x. So three and a half times x equals six times five, which is 30. Then we divide both sides by three and a half. x equals 30 divided by 3 and 1 half. Okay, if I'm dividing, I'm going to have to make this a more complicated fraction. So, I'm going to come over here. 30, I'm going to put 30 over 1 divided by 3 and 1 half. 3 and 1 half needs to become an improper fraction. 3 times 2 is 6, 7. So, 3 and a half is the same as 7 halves. So, we have 30 over 1 divided by... 7 over 2. Remember, when we, when we divide, we can multiply it. All we have to do is flip it. So 30 over 1 times 2 over 7. Multiply that. 30 times 2 is 60. 7 times 1 is 7. It becomes 60 over 7. So x equals 60 over 7. We can make that a mixed number. To figure out how many times... 7 goes into 60, we will divide. So 7 into 60. Well, we should know that 7 times 7 is 49. Not enough. 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract, you have 4 left over. So your whole number is going to be 8. Your numerator is going to be 4. And your denominator is going to be 7. So x equals 8 and 4 sevenths. And b, our fraction, our proportion, sorry, would be 8 over 10 equals 2 over x. Cross multiply, 8x equals 2 times 10, which is 20. Then we divide both sides by 8. Divide by 8. 
x equals 20 over 8. That can be simplified. Um, we know that 4 goes into both of those. So 20 over 8, 4 goes into 20 five times, goes into 8 two times. Then we can make that a mixed number. 2 goes into 5, 2 and 1 half times. So x equals 2 and 1 half. I know especially this last part is kind of complicated, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Jupiter, on Zoom. Um, I'm more than willing to answer any sort of questions you may have. Stay safe. I'll see you soon.